What's up, everybody? <clears throat> Welcome back. Blind Sample Showdown, week number six. We got a heavyweight battle going on today. Uh, we have a smiling face over here to what would be my left on my screen. I don't know where he's at for you guys, but this is Richard, the whiskey provisioner. You may recognize his face from a few uh, videos from a small channel, uh, the Whiskey Tribe. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of that one, um, but yeah. He uh, used to be part of the Whiskey Tribe, so there's that. Then on my right side, we have Bobby from the Bourbon Battalion. Also has a YouTube channel and a fairly large Instagram presence. Um, he is kind of a... Um, almost like an educator. Uh, goes through and does, does sampling and whiskey tastings. Um, for people on a regular basis, and uh, I think he's got some other exciting news to drop on us, too. Um, so go ahead, guys, introduce yourselves a little bit further than what I did, and uh, we'll get ready to go. Cool. And in the meantime, um, you can you can pour your samples into the glass and get them opened up. Sure. I'm Richard. I'm a whiskey provisioner on all the social medias. We've been doing a bunch of uh, interviews at West China Tea. Uh, basically talking whiskey and tea. And uh, we've been having some interesting guests. We've got uh, a few more lined up for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've been actually getting quite a few episodes. People coming in uh, to share the whiskeys that they're uh, enjoying at the moment or the companies that they work with and uh, telling us, uh, you know, what a uh, little bit about the whiskeys, a little bit about the tea, and then talking about farming, agriculture, culture, all of that stuff. Very cool. Cool. Yeah. Bobby? If you don't know me, I'm Bobby uh, Bourbon Matayan. I've had a YouTube presence, was on there for a while, um, transferred over to Instagram to further the whiskey cigar presence. Um, been involved in whiskey cigars since the 90s. Drink uh, with my brother, love all that stuff. Found myself getting more involved, more of the education side of the house, uh, helping people understand the how tos, not so much the uh, what do you get, but how do you get it, uh, both in whiskey and cigars. And uh, drop on my own cigar brand. So, yeah. Cool. So, I've heard a little bit about this. What, uh, when can we start looking for your cigars? July. I'll post it out on my socials everywhere uh, around July. You should be able to go on to the site. Uh, I'll post the site up. The website should be up and all that stuff. And then um, it looks like the July time frame right in there is where that'll be. Very good. All right. Well, you guys got them in the glass? Yep. Obviously, don't mix them up. Know which one's number one, number two, yeah. and number three. <clears throat> I think that goes without saying. Right. But I've been shocked before, so... <laughs> Kitty. And Sugar Kitty. So I'm going to go through see. We got a couple people here. I know there's a few, few familiar names in here. We got an FGWC Chris um, cheering for Bobby here. That's Four Gate Whiskey Chris Wood. Okay, very cool. What I would guess. Uh, we got Zach Andrews in here. I don't know if anybody knows that guy, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> um, part of our we got whiskey addict mike in here as well hi mike whiskey franco's in here what's up buddy tater dom thanks for joining again tater spicy strawberry i love the name travis how you doing buddy sugar kitty in here as with every other whiskey tube live stream and uh, da, 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 da. we got a Clint Hickey in here. Damn it. All right. So go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Get started on number one. <clears throat> Over on Instagram, we got Barbells and Bourbons joined. Uh, my boy Rob at HJC Media Group. You guys are into sports and sports talk. Please check HJC Media Group out, uh, podcasts on YouTube, doing some awesome stuff. 
been a lot of talks about the uh, NFL ITP, which is the International Player Pathway. What does specific category mean again? Um, so, like, if you, let's say you're, you're thinking of a multiple, the generic category is a multiple. Okay. The category would then be, is it Scotch malt whiskey? Is it Irish single malt whiskey? Is it Taiwanese? Is it American single malt? So on and so forth. Okay. Because damn it, I, I've got, I don't know whether it's sourced or not. <laughs> so damn you. <laughs> hey, uh, Strawberry, my, uh, my shirt is the, uh, is the bomb pop shirt. And uh, I figured it's starting to get to be, you know, warm season in uh, northern Wisconsin here. So I was going to break out the warm, warm clothes. Alex, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Johnny, thank you for joining. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go through these. As you guys are tasting this, I'll break down how we do this. Uh, we're going to go through them. Give me your guesses for sample number one. We're not going to reveal until the very end. So we'll go through sample one, get your guesses down. We'll move on to sample two, so on and so forth. At the very end, we will reveal the three and the points total for each one. Um, wow. Ten points possible per sample. And uh, your goal is to guess those three things, the category proof and casking generically and specifically. And my goal is to make sure you guys are stumped. Yeah. So I don't know how I'm going to fare on that one this time. Well, I'm not good at this. I can tell you that for now. I can teach shit all day long, but I'm not a, that guy. But I okay, will so this is a, my first long. time, first time doing actual blind. So and, no, I'm and, blinded for years, but we do it as a, me and my brother always did it as just a, an outlet to figure out if we were drinking things we actually liked. Ah. So we never did it for, you know, the proofing and all that kind of stuff. We just did it to like, like I can remember one of the things I drank regular that I loved. I did a double blind of it and I put it down. This is garbage. I would never drink this. And I had like three bottles of it at home. <laughs> and blind is the is the one true way to see if you do like it or don't like it. And obviously, you can't do it one time and, and go on that. You got to do it several times. No, not at all. Sometimes it's different for each uh, each time you have it. But for the most part, if if you have it three four times and you don't like it two or three of them, it's probably not for you. Yeah, it's not that. Um, yeah. So, I'm. Damn it. If it's that, then it's. Okay, I'm just going to leave. Number one, stuff. Brian. We're still on number one. Just got started. Oh, number one. Yeah. Specific cask compared to generic cask, what are you looking for? Uh, generic, tell me, used, new, um, generically, if it's a wine or a, or a beer or a, or a sherry or, or, you know, whatever, wine, wine beer, um, whatever other okay. generic types of cask you can think of. Uh, specific, okay. just break that down to a little bit more specifically. Okay. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Michael's here from Hode Country. Got to love it. So this one could be... Could be one. Let's see. I don't know. Man, you've got me. Because I've got... I'm going in two directions, and one of them could be a source. <laughs> this, this whole show has also, you know, helped me with my poker face as well, so... Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing. If we keep poking at you, maybe we can. <laughs> get I'm react. doing pretty. I'm pretty good on the poker face. I mean, and generally, yeah. then if I if I do smile, I'll I'll play it off like somebody made a funny comment somewhere or something. And hopefully, that yeah, you guys that buy that. What it is. And let's say how many. Uh, let's put that for the years. It could be, well, no, I'm going to go with my initial. Go with that. It, it is 40 degrees, but uh, 
typically this time of year it's not 30 degrees yet so <laughs> we're gonna just embrace it and yes uh, Chris Wisconsin the no way does that mean you were in Wisconsin as well And then just let me know when you guys are ready. I'm, I've given up on the first one. I think I've got what I've got. Yeah, you're where you're going to be. Boy, nice. Yeah. Nice, Chris. A little bit further north than you, but. I feel like there's a song about this. Travis. Uh, let me know in the comments, guys, who you rooting for here. Yeah. Who, who's taking home the win? I don't think I know I'm going to get any more. I'm going to take a quick sip, but I don't think I'm going to get any more. And my brain is failing me. Yeah, that, that one is, uh, yeah, it, it's a fun one. Tony, is what's up, go? buddy? Glad you could join. It could go in a couple different directions. Uh, yeah, there's a that's the thing about blind drive. Yeah, so yeah. I'm done with as much as I'm going to do on that one. All right. Yeah. Well, let's get those guesses in, and we'll uh, we'll keep it moving. Gotcha. I'll go ahead and start, Bobby. I got you on the left side here. Uh, generic category, I put bourbon. Generic ABV, or just let me know if you're ready. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, generic ABV, I put 115. Uh, casking, I put new. Specific category, I put high rye. Specific ABV, I put 115. Casking, I put new chart oak. Age guess was eight. Exact distillery okay. was Old Forester. Exact bottle, 1920. 1920. All right. And Richard, keep. Uh, don't tell me the age guess. Okay, I put uh, rye as the generic category, uh, 60 ABV as the generic proof, uh, wine cask, use wine cask, as there was a sweetness, I'm thinking white wine for some reason, or a Sauvignon, I think it's Canadian, but it could also be sourced whistle pig, but <laughs> 62 for the specific cask. Um, used oak for sure, probably around eight years old. I'm thinking Alberta premium cast strengths. And well, I'm sorry, I missed your specific category, Alberta. Uh, for the distillery and premium cast strength for the uh, exact bottle. Yep. Canadian right. That's right. Got it. All right. Go ahead and move on to number two. Woo. That's funny. The first time I took this off, I didn't take the tape off. I just mm -hmm. took it off anyway, and I was like, that was awful hard. And I was like, didn't realize it was tape off. Oh. So how was your day today, Jeremy? What's that? So how was your day today? My day? Yeah. My day is always good. Really? Any, so day, any day you wake up in the morning is a good day. I don't disagree with that. Number two. Mm. Okay.
Man. Again, I don't want it to be something else. The bottles behind you don't help. Nope. <laughs> they sure don't. No. I know some of the guys have been uh, they've been trying to memorize this and then when they don't see one up there they can they know it's in there. Yeah. But I uh, I move things around. Um Mm. That's not that. That's that. Um, in that case, let's go with that age statement and that distillery. Man. looking for something and I can't find what I'm looking for take <laughs> yeah yeah you this one this one could be a lot of things as well it's uh Spencer it's not multiple choice and uh I think it would be D for everything, all of the above. <laughs> good, good answer there, uh, Randall. <laughs> I think I'm good with whatever I guess. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out which distillery to put down. Um, let's put down. I wish I had a lot of different stuff to know. Mm. I just don't. I have a lot of stuff, but me and my brother have been classic bourbon guys for up until two years ago. Right. Uh, yo, I am drinking um, the New York Distilling Writer's Rye. Yeah, I can't narrow that down. Uh, as, as much as I would be very much interested in that, Randall, I do they make that? Because <laughs> if they do. Uh, what do we got going on over here? Craft Bourbon Hunter joined. Bourbon Sippers joined. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining. All right. I'm giving up. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, Richard. I was just like, ah, you know, I'm just gonna go with it, whatever. That one, that one, I've got. I think I got the first few, but the specific distillery. I don't think I got anything, but I know that it's like the best guess I got. So. Yeah. All right, all right. We'll start with Richard this time. Uh, it's a malt. Malt whiskey. Malt whiskey. Uh, I'm going yeah. to go with 47 generic ABV. Uh, oak cask, general cask, uh, specific category scotch, uh, specific ABV, let's go with 47 again, um, bourbon cask, 10 years old, I have no idea the specific distillery, I went with Belechen, not something I've had, <laughs> so I'm just drawing darts and zero on the uh, exact bottle because I'm really not certain. Um, 
Yeah. All right, Bobby, go for it. All right, my generic category was rye. 120 with my generic ABV. Generic casting was used. But specific category was a finished rye. Specific ABV was 121.2. Specific casting was port. It was a port finished. Uh, exact distillery, I put in Woodenville. Exact bottle is their Woodenville cast strength port. That's a great guess, actually. Mm. Uh, pork fish dry. All right. Uh, this would go really, really good with cigars. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> Especially if you like it a little darker. You got a specific cigar in mind? I actually do. I figured you might. I'm like, oh, yeah. I know exactly what I would have that with. Uh, All right. We are doing really good on time, guys. You guys are good at this. Good at moving along. No, we're fast at it. We're fast at it. Making making choices, all the wrong choices. Yeah. All right, you guys want to take a take a little palate cleanser? Take a little. No, I'm good. Um, that just means I got to reacclimate the palate to proof. Piss right, there you go. Best best thing to clean your palate is more whiskey. Mm. Last thing you need to do is have to reacclimate your palate to your proof. Piss on that. Mm. Okay. Pretty, right? Now this would be an, a mean, awful trick. And since the comment came up, uh, these are all whiskey. There is no tricks here. Um, no funny business going on. No rums, gins, anything like that. Mm. Braxton, mm. nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Patty, nice to see you. Thank you, Randall. Yeah, Randall's going to be a guest. Uh, well, he already was a guest. And uh, we had a good time talking whiskey. And tea. I bet. Yeah, he uh, he let me know that he was uh, he was on your on your show there. Tea is not something I've ever been into, um, but I I definitely can see the correlation between enjoying whiskey and, and enjoying tea. Well, yeah, you picked some interesting. This last one is yeah. I can tell you what I think of the last one. Fuck right off. And I mean that oh. like a term of endearment. But, uh, okay. An endearing fuck off. I like it. Man. What is that? This is going to take a little while now. You got plenty of time. We are only at, we're only at 24 minutes in, guys. So if you need some time with this, you know, obviously water it down. Do whatever you got to do to, to make your choices. This is definitely all. I love meat and like that. Stop. It's trying to be that, but it's not. It's... Mm. Because I'm looking for another taste and it's not in there. Without giving too much away while we're doing this, we're we're gonna we're gonna set up. You know the good thing, Richard. Up to. Yeah, I'm so old. I would have probably missed it and forgot it. Yep, yep. I'm 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 right there with you. I've been doing this for for far too long. 
and I've experienced far too many things over the past few years. I've created certain brain cells for certain things. But you know what? I can't get rid of those fucking phone numbers of the kids I grew up with back in the 70s. Oh, there you go. Isn't that that weird? I know every phone number of every friend I ever had. Yep. Crazy. I called my uh, grandparents every Christmas, and uh, th- their their phone number, even after they passed, is still stuck in my head. Oh yeah. Just... Back, when to, remember, back when you had to ring, back when you had to so, ring number numbers. Um, there's a there's a viewer that drops in every now and then, and uh, she always messes with everybody and says, "I'm telling you, it's an Iranian single malt finished in hot sauce barrels." <laughs> and the whiskey shop at the kids show oh man yeah, well you know what I got some choice words for those kids like Goo Goo Gaga and how are you doing and like Elmo and like fuck Elmo <laughs> you know what Brian, are you still in uh, Louisiana, or are you back to uh, Colorado? I have no. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, specific past. I don't think I've ever been in this big of a loss. This. There's so many things like ooh, not there. Okay. Hey Ken, nice to see oh, you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, okay. Good way to kill the time at the airport. Watch a blind sample show now. I like it. Yeah, man. Again, man, that's a uh, interesting. a couple of things like you're you're throwing us good curveballs so thank you (laughs) that's what i like to hear yeah i'm going to be surprised when i find out what they are because they could go in different directions all of them i can tell you what i'm going to find that what i'm going to do when it's done i'm going to light up my cigar that i have on the ready which is weird because i don't ever drink without a cigar so that i've never done it well, every blind I've ever done, I've done with a cigar. Well, there you go. That's what's throwing you off. Hmm. Well, pal- and, uh, pal- that's my palate cleanser. Tony, that bottle <laughs> is gone, buddy. I have I have a human gross whiskey disposal unit in my house. <laughs> Mixed with Dr. Pepper? No, uh, my wife actually, uh, she likes to drink whiskey, except she never says, you know, what she wants. She always says, give me the cheapest one or give me the ones you don't like. This would fall in that category. Oh, you don't like this one, huh? I would never, I I would, I would, this would make a mediocre flame and a fire. Mm. That'll drain I don't, we have a thing in our house. We don't bottle pour anything. We throw it in the fire. Mm-hmm. Make for a nice blue flame sometimes. Some of them are impressive. Like I the bet. worst thing I ever got that made an impressive flame was called Lincoln. Someone sent us a sample of, I think it's like old Lincoln or something like a green, whatever it was out of Illinois, Indiana. That shit was terrible. Yeah, but it was super high ABV, and we threw it in there, and I mean, it was like a blue ball. We were like, "Whoa, that was that's cool. the best thing about the whole bottle." <laughs> best thing about the bottle was to watch it burn. That's right. All right. Well, you guys, let me know when you're ready on this one. Yeah, no, I'm uh, not- I've pretty well given up on this too. Oh, proof. Uh, age is what I'm looking for. Let's do right about there. Okay. Of course, Travis. Come on now. What kind of question is this? 
<laughs> Smack off him. All right. Uh, let's see. We did Bobby first, Richard second. So let's go back. Yet. Hold on, Jim. Oh, you're not ready yet. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought okay. I thought you said yeah. No, no. I'm jumping the gun now. Look at that. Yeah, I think a few of the a few of these I haven't had before, so I'm don't have really much reference for a specific. I don't think I've had any of these to be honest with you. Yeah. But I think they're the best close ghost guesses I can make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with friends like these, Strawberry. Friends and coworkers, you know. I messed that uh, euphemism up. I say with friends like these, who needs enemas? Ooh. <laughs> Got to play with your <clears throat> euphemisms. <laughs> Travis, just because you don't like good whiskey, it doesn't, doesn't mean you have to trash it for everybody else. I know it's, I know with your, you know. Love for gas station food and whatnot. The finer things in life, such as Lafroy, yeah, sometimes be... slip past you. That's not what that is. No, Oy. stick with what? Stick with the gut. Yes, poor Sam, Johnny. Poor Sam. That's right. Marshall's here. Yeah, Marshall's always here. He's got to see what his what his competition's going to be. He he won the first <laughs> the first week. He won. There you go. <laughs> That's uh, they scraped that Pete for the. Uh, the 2028 batch of Cargis. <laughs> All right, that's about as good as I'm going to get. That was just fuck okay. You. Fuck you, well, we will start with Bobby then. All right, I put the generic category as a rye. The generic ABV is 90. Generic cast. Did you say nine, nine zero ninety? Nine zero, yeah. Generic casket was new. Specific category high rise. Specific ABV ninety. Specific casting new oak. Uh, you don't want the age, right? No, I don't want the age. What was your specific proof again? I'm sorry. Uh, ninety. Still ninety. Okay. Exact distillery Hudson. Exact bottle Hudson Rye. Hmm. Nice. Good guesses, actually. Very good guesses. Yep. I was waffling on that too. <laughs> and go ahead, Richard. Well, I went with bourbon at the same proof, uh, 45 ABV. Um, thinking wine cask again. Uh, American high rye bourbon specific proof. I'm going to stick with the 45. Um, I think it's oak finished with uh, with a wine cask, so new oak bourbon barrel finished with wine cask. Um, Woodenville, and that's just a guess. Did you have a bottle in mind from Woodenville? Not at all. Um, yeah, they, they, they've got a half a dozen. <laughs> yeah, 
And we'll go back to number two and pour that one out of the sky. Mm-hmm. Man, that could be international. It could be, that's just, that's the thing with these. It could be so many other things. Yeah, I know. I might, uh, I, okay. <laughs> And it could definitely All right. Well, guys, good news. We don't have a tie. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about the ages. All right. And then before we uh, break into these, now I think I know Bobby's uh, thoughts on sample number three, but what did you think of each each whiskey? Uh, I liked one and two. I liked one and two. Three probably just wouldn't have hit my palate because it was just the absence of everything. There was nothing about it that was stood out. I mean, at the very last minute, the the distillery I came up with was just because it's kind of felt like it was that for me. And I I don't hate it. It just isn't enough for me. I just right. it was just missing. Like I can understand where like maybe novice somebody, somebody coming in just starting to drink and yeah, they might be like, hey, you know, that's a nice sugar water. So, okay, Richard. Uh, same thing. Uh, actually, number three was pleasant, easy. Like you said, not a whole lot of anything. So it was really hard to figure out where it was coming from. Um, number one, um, it that one threw me because I thought it could be uh, it could be a couple of things. It could be a source thing. It could be you know. So that one, that one went back and forth for me. The the second one, um, mulchy, grassy, um, but it could have been an American malt. It could have been a, a Scotch malt. One something that I wasn't really familiar with, but um, it could have gone either way. It could have been a younger American malt, or it could have been an older uh, Scotch malt, but not one that was like terribly matured, like in in the uh, eight to ten year old range or a non-age statement. So yeah, number two, but, I was bouncing back and forth between two things. Mm -hmm. I was somewhere between like, wow, that really tastes like Texas. Mm -hmm. And do I get a lot of fucking port nose? Mm -hmm. I know it's not Reverend Oak. Right. So, uh, Cause I drink that all the time. And I was like, I could, I could have made a case for both of them. And I was now, just like, now I'm oh, going back to it. You're right. And it, I think it's more Sherry. I could have, I I could have bounced between, that like there was a yeah. part of me that like initially the very first nose was like, wow, I really get a signature port note. Yep. Yep. But yep. my mouth that, was like, man, that seems a little Texas-y to me. Yep. And so yeah, I was like, just, you know what? I'm not going to try to guess half of one or half another. I'm just going to go with what makes sense and just went with that. Yeah. It's, it's mulchy and it's, uh, and it does like, and now, now that I'm going back to it, it's definitely got a, uh, it's got some kind of sherry note in there. So I wish I would have done it with a yeah. cigar because it tastes completely different with a cigar. Yep. And that's oh, yeah. That's what I usually do. All right. Well, let's go through sample number one. Mm -hmm. uh, the score on sample number one, Bobby, three points. Richard, zero. No. <laughs> okay. Generic category. It is a bourbon. Bobby, you got bourbon. Uh, Richard, you said rye. Generic ABV proof. Um Bobby, you said 115. Richard, you said uh, 120. Uh, the proof on it is actually 50.5%, so 101 proof. Wow, that drinks a little warm, surprisingly. Uh, generic casking, Bobby, you got that with new. Um, Richard, you said used in wine. Um, specific category. Bobby, you said high rye. Uh, Richard, you said Canadian rye. The truth is... The mash bill on this one is undisclosed completely, but it is believed to be a high rye. Uh, I searched and searched and searched and, and uh, reached out to distillery and to no avail. Uh, not going to find any information on what the actual mash bill is on it. I know but it wasn't weeded. It was, uh, it is, I, I, well, uh, yeah, I would say it's not weeded as well. well no, I mean, I just, that's the reason I said that. So I was like, I know it's not a weeded. Yeah. So uh, we're there on that one. Uh, specific proof, both of you guys went high again. Um, specific casking, Bobby, you got that with new. 
Uh, your exact distillery, Bobby, was Old Forester and a bottle of 1920. Richard, you said Alberta Premium with the, or Alberta with the premium cast strength. The actual bottle is Willits Johnny Drum. Oh, nice. So uh, nice. we don't have an age statement on it. It's straight, so it's plus, right. it's two years plus. Um, they do not give us the mash bill on this, but it is speculated that Willet is pretty much a high rye mash bill almost all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I would tend to believe that with the way that it tastes with those little bit of herbal grassy notes on top of the bourbon. So there we have a three to zero on sample number one. Sample number two, you're going to hurt some feelings here, but uh, Bobby, you said rye. Richard, you said malt. Uh, and I missed one. You did get one point. Let me double check this again. Okay. So sample number two ended up being a tie of one to one. Um, Bobby, you said rye. Richard, you said malt. Richard, it is a malt whiskey. Uh, generic proof. Bobby, you said 120. You did land within plus or minus two of the actual proof. Uh, the actual proof is 118.3. And I'm betting there's probably a few people in the comments that can guess what kind of bottle this is at 118.3. Uh, Richard, you said 47%. So, um, what is that, 94? Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, generic casking. You both said used ex bourbon, so on and so forth. You were half right. Um, there is a new oak finish on this whiskey. Uh, it is used oak for um, like four years and then put into a virgin French oak for a year. That makes sense on that taste profile. Okay. How do you say that? Um, specific category, you said finished rye, you said scotch, so it is an American single malt. Yeah. Um, you were both <laughs> off on the specific <laughs> proof and the casking again, uh, we were both off a little bit on that. Um, distillery and bottle guesses, both not correct, it is Cedar, Cedar Ridge. Ridge. Of course it is. French Oak Finch. <laughs> uh, quintessential. I've got a bottle of that coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a single cast special project, uh, French Oak finished and cast strength. Uh, the quintessential, any, any quintessential you have is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and that makes well sense. worth, well worth the purchase. So there we have a one-to-one -one score on that one and then moving on to sample number three yeah uh sample number three ended with a score of four to zero bobby you got four points <laughs> there we go bobby Richard bobby's a wiener <laughs> bobby is the wiener uh bobby you said rye it is a rye whiskey uh richard cool. said bourbon generic proof bobby you said 90 you both said 90 uh, it is actually at 96 proof. Yeah, uh, generic casking. Bobby, you got that with a new. Uh, Richard, you said used. And wine. Um, specific category. Bobby, you said high rye. And it is actually a high rye rye. Uh, it is rye, rye malt, uh, and corn. So it is 50, 53% rye. 30% rye malt, 17 corn. Uh, specific ABV, both with the 90 again, so that's off. Uh, casking, Bobby, you got that one with new. Uh, you said Hudson and Hudson rye. Um, Richard, you said Woodenville, Woodenville rye, or Woodenville bourbon. Um, it is actually... I lost my train of thought there, what I was doing. And now you hurt my feelings, Bobby. But <laughs> this is Great Northern. I've never had it. No. Uh, so no, this is a craft it. distillery local to me. Um, this is their standard offering rye whiskey. It is actually only stated at a year old. Um, yeah, they do a lot of maturation. I had it at like two years, four months. Okay. So they do a lot of maturation in, in wow. 30 gallon barrels for three plus years. And then they do some maturation in 10-gallon barrels for one year, just okay. over a year. 
Yeah. And then they blend them together to make the to make the batch. Nice. Um, so it there is some young stuff in it, um, and it's I mean overall it's fairly young anyways. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the first rye whiskeys that I ever had, and I will always have a soft spot for this. But they're seven year old, six six plus seven year old stuff. Cast strength is definitely definitely a much different product than this is, and uh, but. I will I will always have a spot soft spot for this one. One of my favorite, just easy drinking. I don't need to think about it, rye whiskeys. And uh, I enjoy it every time. So so with a final score, we got Bobby at eight, Richard at one. Bobby, you, sir, are moving on. And that means you get to go up against Zach oh, oh, on five twenty nine. I've done it before. Cool. So now that you guys kind of got a little uh you know, you got a you got a little experience in it. You kind of know what to expect. As far as I have no idea what to expect. This yeah, yeah, that's the probably thing. the best way. Kind of know with what you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, you know, I'll tell you what. I have done blinds before. Um, now, granted, it was me and my brother, and you know, classic bourbon and that stuff. I have been on a blind before. I've only ever done one blind, like on a show. Um, that was always, you know, you can really narrow grouping. So I really like this. I think what you're doing, Jeremy, is really unique because you have to have a whiskey palette, not a bourbon palette, not a scotch palette. You, know, you have to have a whiskey palette. Yeah, and I right think right. that's the cool thing about it, right? That you sit there and think about it. I, I think that is so unique, and that's why I was excited to do it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And that's kind of... Kind of my, my my whole deal with this is, yeah, I mean, it's to, to make the love for whiskey. And, um, you know, last week, Brian and uh, Andrew were on, and Andrew is admittedly pretty much straight up a, a bourbon guy. Um, he, he has experimented a little bit, but doesn't really doesn't really venture out. And he really fell in love with a, a, a 2007 Isla Barley Brook Lottie. Um, so, you know. Uh, it's it's just really neat to to see people branch out and then actually enjoy what they've branched out to. Yeah, yeah and that's I'm awesome. just always in also, the strange weird categories, so I get lost. <laughs> also, to, uh, to, to be able to uh, one to be able to share this with people is, is also incredibly fun, um, and introduce things like Cedar Ridge to people who may have, may not have never had it, um, so on and so forth. Yeah, I've had, you know I've had Cedar Ridge, but I've never had the quintessential. I've, I've I've interviewed him, I've done a extensive interview with him on it, but I've never had it. You know, I, okay. Mm. I've had Cedar Ridge, but I was there doing bourbon picks and bourbon finish picks. Sure. But mm. never got into the other stuff, right? Yeah. I uh I almost half I half expected you, Bobby, to to nail that Johnny Drum. I don't know for some reason in well, my mind. Know, I, it wasn't on the top of my head. I just knew that there was, uh -huh. I was like, I know I've had this. I mean, I knew I had it. I just was struggling because, you know, like that. when it comes to the bourbon realm, you know, me and my brother have everything. And so, you know, we've drank, like we, before you got all the boutique stuff now, I mean, you know, we had everything. So we were always drinking through everything because you know, he's been collecting for a very, very long time. So, like, we have ECB pirate, pirate bottle number ones. We have all that stuff. So, usually when I start drinking through it, it'll hit me. I'm like, God, I know I know this. Hmm. But my memory was just like, I couldn't pull it out. Oh, did I drink quintessential at lunch? Hmm. Did we? Yeah, well, I guess I did. I didn't know it. <laughs> Kent, yeah, absolutely. That is a great bottle to fall in love with. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's fantastic. One of my favorite ones in my Scotch collection. I'll tell you what the funny thing was on number three. Mm -hmm. I when you started to say something like, "Hey, okay, let's go," I said, like, "No, I only had one thing broke down." Oh. And the only thing I knew was that's a rye. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you got that because that that is that's a a big thing. 
Yeah, that was the only thing I knew. I was like, that's a rye. Yeah. I know that's a rye. I was just like, but it was so absent of, because I love rye, and I'm like, I'm so absent of, it wasn't anything. And then I was like, what can I pull from my memory that was just really like, okay, but not something I would buy again. And I remember having that feeling with Hudson, the New York distillery, and had yeah. a rye. And, and yeah. I was thinking, I was like, similar. I had a similar experience with Hudson, and, and I, I haven't gone back to him since. Right. <clears throat> uh, Travis is wondering what quintessential you're getting, Richard. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which one. My wife picked one up in Iowa, so I'll be able nice. to post pictures of it soon. There you go. Yep. Nice. Even better. A surprise. Hey, a surprise. Jimmy, what's the date that... I have to do Zach. You said it was like May 29th or something like that? Yep, 529. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, we're getting we're getting down there. We got two weeks left of round one, and then we get into the we get into round two. So well, I guess our live tonight's gonna be me and Zach basically talking shit to each other. I'm there hoping so. I'm I'm really hoping it's so. gonna be that. It's basically just gonna be us trash talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Because he's yep. like, because you know, he's such a Scotch guy. I'm mm -hmm. such a everything, Durban, Rye, and all that stuff. So when we ran into these things, this was actually for me, I was guessing what made sense for me. Um, it just happened to be kind of made sense. Yeah. You know, but uh if it, you know, when you get into the rest of this, like a whole time I was sitting here dreading, I was like, every time I smell, I was like, oh thank God it's not scotch. I was like, no, that's not scotch. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I was thinking as I go, it's not a scotch. <laughs> yeah. And I am yep. uh, I actually poured a little bit of that quintessential before before we went on. So I in and, and I'm I can kind of see where you're getting port from. Yeah. yeah you know, I think the sure. thing was is that you know, like I sat down so like I had a complete brain meltdown earlier. I don't know what I was thinking. We were talking about going on at 7 p.m. Uh, CST. I don't know if you noticed, but I jumped on at 6. Oh, I didn't notice. I jumped on. I was like, wait a second. 6. I was like, I'm the wrong way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you I'm in like, uh, you're not in central time zone. You're in. No, I'm in Eastern. Yeah, that's right. And I was just, I don't know. I just went into brain lock. I made everybody go upstairs, get real quiet. We got food right, and I got done. I was like, "Hey, I came upstairs like I'm two hours early." <laughs> Excellent. So, All right, gentlemen, we are we cheers. are creeping up onto an hour. Stick around for a minute, and and we'll uh, we'll All chat right. after the stream ends. But uh, thank you, everybody in the comments for uh, tuning in, watching, sticking around. All of that, love it. Um, if anybody on Instagram is interested in a few minutes, I'll probably start up a live for uh, a little bit of time afterwards just to uh, recap the show. Bobby, if you want to jump on, Richard, if you want to jump on, you're more than welcome. I know you got a thing with Zach here. 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Eastern, we go live. Okay, so you got Bourbon a little Italian. bit of time yet there. Yeah, the link is uh, right in my screen at Bourbon Italian. We'll go live. 10. Uh, this will be the topic. I am sure of it. Excellent. Well, congratulations. So, you did really good. Hey, thanks. <laughs> hey, uh, in all honesty, it is hard. I mean, it's a this, hard thing. You guys, this is one of the probably the most difficult things to do uh, in, in whiskey in general. Uh, yeah. You guys both did great. Uh, obviously, some of the guesses landed better than the others, but in, in all honesty, you guys did great. Uh, yeah. And it, pleasure to have you both on. Hey, Terrence, nice to see you. Um, and until next week, guys, uh, we have, what do we got next week? Week number seven, we have Kayla, the TX Whiskey Geek, and Adrian Shine. Um, Ought to be a good, fun show because Adrian is a blast she's to a, talk to. She's a hit. So, speaking of, look at that. Say his name and he will come. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. People in the comments, thank you. Instagram, thank you. And uh, until next week, cheers to this American spirit. <laughs>